Cars are changing and software is at the heart of that change. Most modern vehicles are complex computing platforms as well as means of transport. A Volvo truck contains more than 18 million lines of code. To put that into context, that's about six times more code than the Android operating system. But modern electric vehicles and their production take this way further. So what is the role of software in electric vehicles and what does this mean for the next generation of the car industry? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. The car industry is currently going through a revolution. Probably the biggest change that it's been through since cars became generally publicly available. Despite what some of the naysayers may say, the transition to electric vehicles is firmly underway. This is for lots of reasons, and it presents a wide variety of opportunities and challenges. A significant number of these challenges and opportunities are about or addressed by software. Software is firmly part of the electric vehicle revolution that's currently transforming how we perceive what cars are and how we're going to use them in future. This has economic and social impacts, even before we get to the impact um, that all of this may have one day on climate change. Before we go any further, let me say thank you to our sponsors. We're fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Tricentis and Transfic. All of these companies are big supporters of this channel and offer products and services that are well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, please do support them by checking out their links in the description below. So what kinds of role does software play in this new world of personal transport? And no, it isn't all about self-driving cars, though we will get to that a bit later. Software is everywhere in an electric car. From the electronic control units that look after specific functions of the car, steering, braking, suspension, even the position of the seats maybe, to the infotainment systems, navigation systems and electronic whoopee cushions. But for most modern cars, let alone electric cars, the economics of software driven systems come into play here too. Electronic sensors, displays and the software and hardware to connect them together are a lot cheaper than single purpose physical gauges and controls. So now we have touch screens in place of analog instruments and the knobs and dials to control them. All of these computing devices and more make a modern electric car a complex, sophisticated distributing computing platform. A modern Tesla has over a hundred discrete computing devices in it. These things are essentially robots on wheels. The infotainment part of a car's computer systems is an interesting evolving area in its own right, but I also think probably a forerunner of where many of the other software systems and services will go. It's on the journey to becoming commoditized. It's been a while since car manufacturers navigation systems have been best of breed. We've become accustomed to third party versions like Google Maps, Waze, Apple Maps and so on being a lot better than those of the in-house offerings from the car manufacturers. I know I usually check in with Google Maps before a long trip because the traffic reporting and search facilities are a lot better than even my relatively new car's in-house equivalent. So now we are seeing the commoditization of features like these. Apple's CarPlay and Android's Auto both offer independent, more customizable additions to the car's uh, natively built-in systems that effectively offer a user-controlled port for the customization of the car's systems and services. A kind of third-party operating system for our cars, I suppose. My guess is that this trend will continue to grow and evolve. The latest version of the Apple system uh, allows their OS Bolt-on CarPlay to control multiple screens now in the car. 
That's one of the few advantages my current in-car systems have over the more generic, more customizable CarPlay-based alternatives. This will effectively extend the range of customization possible for your car systems. I already tend to use Siri in my car in preference to the built-in voice recognition uh, where I can. I imagine that this is a trend that we're going to see extend to more and more services in our cars. In the future, the car becomes a semi-open platform computing device in this world, running some form of car OS that can run a wide variety of applications and services. How long before you can decide to upgrade the self-parking function in your Ford with the Tesla version, or vice versa? This will be challenging on lots of different fronts. How do you regulate add-ons that may have safety implications in a world like this? Who is responsible for a bad accident if the car is being driven by an autopilot created by one company, running on an operating system created by another, running alongside a load of apps from yet more companies, all interacting with a physical car created by yet another firm? Yeah, I know that we are some way from that right now, but I would guess that the economies and user demand will certainly push us in that direction. This revolution in cars is only just beginning. I described the lead that Tesla has over other car manufacturers in this space in this video uh, that I made a couple of years ago. That lead has grown since then. And I would imagine that the idea of Tesla or other leaders in the field selling their version of self-driving software to other car manufacturers who perhaps don't have the expertise or scale of investment to create their own versions of these increasingly complex software systems could mean that licensing deals and standardization will make a lot of commercial sense one day. After all, would you prefer to be IBM of the 1980s trying to lock people in or Microsoft franchising de facto standards to nearly everyone else in the market? If cars do move in the direction of becoming a software tailorable platform and the moves to standardize continue, then most manufacturers would be freer to focus on the things that differentiate them to them buyers rather than expending lots of effort on creating poor second class versions of software features that are increasingly seen as representing table stakes for competing in the car market. The way that features like navigation and audio systems are seen now. And maybe how self-driving will be seen one day soon. You may be thinking that lots of these things are generic to modern cars, not specific to electric cars at all. And I guess you could certainly see it like that. But electric vehicles have a big advantage over internal combustion engine cars in this respect, because they're a lot simpler. There are fewer moving parts in an electric car, and all of those parts are electrically connected and communicating with each other via data buses of some form. So these are much more naturally and much more easily customizable and controlled by computers. And so they're also more readily commoditized. None of the barriers to these things happening are based on technical constraints, really, just commercial and legal ones. As I said earlier, my guess is that the commercial pressures will favor changes like this. The next form of software that is unique to electric vehicles, though, are battery management systems. Software systems that manage charging, tuning for optimal performance and safety and so on. This is an ever-changing field, and while car batteries as a technology are evolving but slowly at the moment, there have been big advances in their manufacture and management, which once again changes the economics. One way this is true is as part of the bigger picture of power generation. Lots of people worry about the high additional demand on electricity grids that electric cars and their, their charging represents. But actually, the people who work on such grids aren't really worried about that at all. And certainly the more thoughtful of those people are actively excited at the prospect. Because it opens the door to a much, much smarter uses of energy and its distribution. That's because all of those big car batteries represent a very big opportunity and a very valuable resource. Certainly in the UK, Europe, the USA and Australia, renewable energy generation is fast reaching a tipping point. 
because there's a lot to like about free power from the sun, wind and waves. The problem is that these sources of energy are so variable. And often the times when the renewables are at their peak don't coincide with the times when demand for electricity is at its peak. The normal response to dealing with these hills and valleys in demand is burning things that release lots of CO2, which currently fills the gaps. Largely because you can easily turn gas power stations off and on again to accurately track that demand. The other alternative to burning gas though is storage, batteries. Capture the renewable energy when it's plentiful, when the sun is shining or when the wind's blowing, and store it somewhere. Then discharge the batteries and feed the clean energy into the grid when it's needed and demand is high. The problem here is where do you get all of these, this vast amount of storage from? Where do these batteries come from? Well, one idea is to use the battery in all of these millions of electric cars as a reservoir of energy to distribute the storage. Charge your car up when energy is cheap or free and discharge your car to the grid when demand is high. This is called vehicle to grid. Energy companies are very excited at the prospect of this, of the potential of all of that storage capacity just sitting in people's electric cars. This is an interesting distributed solution and an interesting distributed problem in computing at national scale too. Some cars are already doing this, but there are moves to make all of the next generation of electric vehicles charging systems work this way and, and facilitate vehicle to grid. Then we'll need systems and protocols that allow us to manage these resources effectively. Both locally, you decide how much of your car's battery capacity you want to sell to the grid. And globally, the energy companies running on the grid need to detect excess demand and bring batteries in cars online as needed. This is an interesting and challenging software problem for organisations that traditionally haven't needed to react quite so nimbly before. I saw a really interesting keynote talk at Yao last work in Australia from Astrid Atkinson, who used to lead part of the construction of Google's cloud infrastructure, but is now working on next generation electricity grids to enable ideas like this. Astrid says that there is a huge crossover between the kind of thinking that's needed to build things like public cloud infrastructure and these more flexible, more distributed energy grids. This is a distributed information problem. And we are the experts at that kind of stuff. There's a link to that talk in the description to this video. There is one more way that electric vehicles and in particular the Tesla electric vehicles are pushing the boundaries with software thinking. And that's in the manufacture of the cars themselves. Tesla have revolutionized car manufacture. Yes, robots have been building cars for a long time now, but a Tesla factory is effectively a big software driven robot, which is designed to produce cars and is programmed via continuous delivery. A couple of years ago, Tesla wanted to increase the maximum charge rate of their Model 3 car from 200 kilowatts to, to a maximum of 250. This change required a physical change to the design of the charging system in a car, including the rerouting of some fairly heavy duty cables. The change was initiated by a software change though, which reprogrammed the factory. The change was made and committed, uh, which triggered a bunch of tests in their deployment pipeline that evaluated it and ultimately decided that the code was good enough and ready for release. The change was deployed to the factory and three hours after the commit was made, the Tesla production line was producing a new version of the Model 3 with the higher maximum charge rate of 250 kilowatts. Tesla operates a continuous delivery process for cars. This is what another way in which software is deeply influencing the generation of modern cars. Finally, once self-driving does become reliable, legal and common, all of which are coming, it will eventually change our relationship with cars. Why buy a car and keep it not being used for most of its lifetime when you could subscribe to a carpool of some kind and simply ask for the right kind of card for your particular journey to come and collect you where and whenever suits you 
for a tiny fraction of the cost of owning a car yourself. Sure, some strange hobbyists will probably own their own cars for fun, maybe even petrol cars, but it seems to me pretty evident that software is currently in the process of radically shaking the world of cars and car ownership to its roots. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy our stuff here on the Continuous Delivery channel, please do consider supporting our work by joining our Patreon community. Membership has lots of benefits and you can try it for free and buy membership for as little as $2 a month. But if you subscribe at one of our VIP levels, there are lots of additional benefits, including invitation to occasional special uh, exclusive features, live events with, uh, with me and so on. Thank you again to all of our patrons for your ongoing support and thank you once more for watching. Bye bye.